Hi everyone. I'm so glad that you could join us again here on Edify. My name is Robert Muando. This program is made just for you. Yes, you who is watching me now. Are you going through difficult times? Are you faced with death-like situation? Are you struggling with a habit that you can't stop? Or did you just come to an unexpected turn in your life? And it seems like a dead end, the end of the road for your endeavors. Know this one thing, that unexpected turn may just well be your turning point. I am glad to feature on Edify today a guest whose unexpected turn became his turning point. Omsolo Arthur Kamia did drugs for seven years. He was only 14 years old when he started. He is the regional ministry coordinator of the Scripture Union of Uganda Eastern Region. Welcome on set, Mr. Omusolo Arthur Kamia. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And so, Arthur. Yes. When and how did you start doing drugs? Oh, when I started doing drugs way back in 2003, that was in my senior one. I joined a, a school that was purely boarding from a background of being full at home in primary. And so when I joined, there was this exposure. And on day one of joining, I was bullied by students greatly. And so I joined a gang that very week that promised me security, not to be bullied and all that. And of course, everyone would love not to be bullied. So I joined this gang, and uh, one of the dudes in that gang was drugs. And so I was initiated to these drugs. And so the first time I did the drug was on a Saturday. I remember we had a variety show at school. And so we had, we had some drugs for ourselves. Mm. Um, particularly that that drug was called Cuba, I remember. And so when I did it, I felt so high that I I demanded to jump on stage and perform. Mm. Yeah. So had you been on stage before or it's the drug that gave you that courage? I had never been on stage before because given my background, from my humble background, and so I wasn't used to these things of stage. And so I would say, really, it's because I was high. So mm -hmm. I felt I could do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, week one in high school, mm -hmm. and uh, from then on, seven years nonstop. Tell us about how did that affect your studies? Uh, how it affected my studies? The truth is, uh, the moment I began drugs and these gangs, I didn't concentrate in school. I attended less of classes because uh, after some time, some of my gang members were expelled and so I came up to lead the gang. And so I concentrated much on leading the gang. What was the name of the gang? <laughs> the gang was called Thug Unit. Yeah, and Thug so we, Unit? Yeah. What a name. Sure. Uh -huh. So we spent a lot of time uh, escaping, going to dancing clubs, going to see how to get drugs, rehearsing our dances in the bushes, and su such stuff. Mm. So we spent much of the time there, and so we didn't have time to attend classes. And even my classes that I was attending really were very, very few. Mm. And that defines my report cards mm. from S1 to first term of senior four. I don't remember taking home a, a report card with full marks for all subjects. I had darling subjects like uh, biology, agriculture, English, history, geography. Okay, those would always be on your Those would always be there. And they would always be there. They'd do one, D2, at worst, a C3. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, did your family know about this? Uh, uh, How did family. you explain the missing uh, results on your report card? See? <laughs> My family didn't know the kind of life I was living, that's the truth. But uh, whenever I would take these 
report cards are always presented genuinely. I, I never duped any report cards, mm. but they knew I was a sports person. And so I'd always give excuses. We had games and this. And so there is that special treat that I've given the sports people. That's why we don't have our marks here. Or at sometimes you forge sickness. And so they had some bit of trust in me, especially being a, a son of a clergy, mm. grown up, grown up from home fully. So they, they knew so there was no exposure. you are a PK, pastor's kid. Oh yeah, I am. <laughs> and you're doing drugs. Huh? And I was doing drugs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you were doing drugs. I was doing I, drugs. I heard you one time referring to yourself as Black Jesus. How does that name come about? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> the gang I was leading, I, it was a gang of 13 people. I was the 13th. Yes. And so the other 12 were under me. So being a son of a, of a clergyman and uh, really from that Christian background, my colleagues felt I don't belong there. But since I was already there, I needed a nickname. And so I was there said to some extent. So I got the name Black Jesus. And they were my disciples. They were the twelve disciples. What a name. Yeah. So um uh tell us about the turning point. Uh, okay. Uh it was in two thousand six. Yeah. Uh, there were some missionaries from Akira University who came and we had uh, a three days conference in school. And so on day one I saw the calling pot get saved, people come in and uh, they, are, they, they are prayed for and some of them were falling. So day two I said, these people should be weak. So I somehow trusted my drugs. Mm. I, I remember I was even high that day. So they made an altar call and we stayed behind with my gang my disciples, and so I, moved, I stood up to go in front to see if they, if they pray for me, I will fall. Now all those who were standing to get saved sat down because they were shocked to see Black Jesus going to get saved because I was one of the biggest names in the entire school. So I went, he prayed for me, I made sure I, 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 gave, it, I gave it a very strong posture of standing so that even if you push, mm. I am firm on the ground. Because I knew I can't get embarrassed by falling down. And so I stood, they prayed for me. He told me, he took me through the confession, yes. But uh, when I asked him, so is that all? He said, yes, he attached me to the spiritual leaders in the school to disciple me. And yeah, that's how salvation began. But it wasn't something I'd planned. I, I just wanted to, to provoke them and see what happens. So you just were doing your business as usual you yeah. you just wanted to be the bad boy that you are to test the preachers yeah sure i was uh, on business as usual like whenever i could have events such events in school then most notorious gang the third unit would come in and try to cause chaos and what i know that's that's what any other bad gang would be would love to be known for so did you stop doing drugs at that point no, 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 no. You see, it was a, a kind of addiction mm. because by 2006, I was doing 12 packets of Cuba in one day. And then I was already doing powdered cocaine. I was injecting myself with vials. And so it had gone to a level of addiction whereby uh, I couldn't just get off immediately. So even when I got saved, I still remained doing drugs. So when, when does... Arthur stop doing drugs. Arthur stops doing drugs. Uh, that is almost four years after getting saved, and that is in 2010 when I joined the university, the UCU, and uh, I had some drugs on me. That was still Cuba. And this particular day, because I was undergoing discipleship by Scripture Union still in Eastern Uganda here in Mbale. And uh, they kept taking me through lots of discipleship classes, praying. So this one day, I still went to do drugs behind the, the hall of the university. So I just did one packet. Given the experience that I was so much experienced in drugs, 
I could do any drag without any challenge. So this particular day I did one packet of Kuba. The moment I put it there, I threw up badly. I vomited seriously and I don't like vomiting. And so since then, the smell of those drugs irritated me a lot. That was the end of my doing drugs. So what would you attribute the vomiting to? Do you think it was God's hand at work? You see, <laughs> when you look at uh, the biblical apostle Paul, yes, he's, he's incidentally one of my best Bible characters because I feel we share a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul tortured the disciples so much. But on his way to Damascus, he was still going to torture people. That's when he met the Lord. He had to first go blind. Mm -hmm. So possibly, the vomiting maybe was the way the Lord was turning my life around. Turning point, indeed. So sure. what is your last word for somebody who might be going through um, what you're going through, what, what you were going through then? Um, just look into the camera, speak mm -hmm. to somebody who might be going through such a, 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 an experience as you had, um, what is one piece of advice you would give them? Well, to my friends out there, I know when you're doing, you're living such a life, you may feel it's the best. You may feel you're enjoying the drugs. Yes. It may be, it's that feeling that you're enjoying the drugs simply because you haven't seen the other part of life. But the reality is, drugs are not good. The reality is, I, I had the chance of getting out of this. But you may think, let me also push it like Arthur. To some point, then I'll get out. But you may not get the chance of jumping out. And so I, my prayer and my request to you is just get off. I know it's a hard thing, but... Start slowly, get off slowly, and eventually you'll be off these drugs. Otherwise, they'll harm your life. Because most of these drugs, when you're taking them, when you read on them carefully, you'll find the harmful to your health, they cause cancer, but we still ignorantly take them. And so let's get back to our lives. Let's value our lives and do the right thing. All guys out there, you've heard from Arthur's story. You might be going through a similar situation, a tough time, a habit you can't break from. One thing that I hear clearly from Arthur's story is that, one, he came to know Christ. Even though it was jokingly, he was also placed under a discipleship team through the scripture union. And I believe that that discipleship work that happened in his life must have marked part of his turning point. And so, if you're going through a similar situation, struggling with a habit, I want to let you know that God has a plan for you, a turning point, a place where you come to and you are able to change your life around. Put your trust in him and he will not let you down. God bless you.